Christian Business Connection, connecting your business or ministry to the world. Good morning and welcome to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas, declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. I tell you, friends, on this 13th day of September. It's a really special day to me because today is my only daughter, beautiful Nicole Thomas. It is her birthday. Okay, we won't go into how I suffered through labor. We won't talk about that. It's not about me. It's about her. (laughs) And today, my beautiful daughter, Nicole, my only daughter, is 24 years old. Woo-wee, 24 years old. My goodness, I remember when she was a baby. So I just want to say happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to my darling Nicole. Well, friends, I want to tell you that today is the day that the Lord has made because he's got a special blessing package in this program for you. I tell you, everybody on this program today is just simply amazing in their own right. We're so blessed that we're going to have on the program today, Dr. Kim Butler Perry of Affinia Healthcare. Oh, I tell you, her interview is just so insightful. She's doing a great work. Affinia is doing a great work work here in the St. Louis metropolitan area. And we want to thank Home State Health for giving them the opportunity to be on the CBC radio show today. Great work you guys are doing over there at Home State Health. Thank you so much, Mrs. Adela Jones. Now, friends, I also want to tell you that we have on the program this morning, Dr. Connie Williams, the Dean of the Cohen Institute. What a blessing it was to have her on the program as well. And she's going to talk about the seminary with an edge. All right. You got to stay around and hear about that. And then we're going to be speaking this morning with a dear friend, one of my dearest friends, Minister. Sister Deborah Mothershed Black. You know, she's got a phenomenal, amazing new book. She is the author of Where Art Thou? So I want you to make sure that you listen to the entire show so that you can hear what God is doing in the kingdom. That's right. What he is doing in the kingdom. So much more. Can't tell you everything. You just got to listen. All right, friends. And I want to encourage you to go to my website, thecbcradioshow.com. That's the CBC radio show.com. If you would like to be interviewed on our exciting program, talking about your business, your ministry, or what God is doing in your life, give me a call 314-270-2225. That's 314-270-2225. All right, friends, I'm going to take a short break right here. And when I come back, we're going to be talking with Dr. Kim Butler Perry of Affinia Healthcare. I'll be right back. Hi, good morning. This is Antha Rogers of EDZArt.com. I'm a proud member of the Christian Business Connection. Contact me for all of your Christian graphic and kingdom needs. Call me at 314-338-5154. And again, this is Antha Rogers of EDZArt.com. I'm a proud member of the CBC Christian Business Connection. Are you a member yet? Good morning. This is Evangelist Nona Thomas. Did you know that every year in this great nation, it is estimated that more than 100,000 people will die simply because they cannot afford the prescription medication they need. Millions more suffer needlessly, forced to make daily life choices between the prescription medicine they need and food, rent, utilities, child care, transportation, or other important medical needs. RX Outreach believes that no one in this country should have to choose between the prescription medication they need and life's necessities. No one. Affordable medication is a right. As the nation's largest fully licensed nonprofit pharmacy, RX Outreach serves only low income individuals and families. As a nonprofit organization, RX Outreach is committed to honoring God by serving others. The RX Outreach Program provides access to more than 300 medications that are available in more than 600 different strengths. Qualification is easy, and RX Outreach patients only pay the low, affordable price for the prescription medication they need. 
Rx Outreach patients do not pay enrollment fees, membership fees, handling fees, or standard shipping fees. Go to rxoutreach.org or call 888-796-1234 to find out if you qualify. Rx Outreach also understands that this problem is larger than just one organization. If you are listening and it's not you who needs assistance, someone near you does. They go to your church, live in your neighborhood, they are your family. Go to rxoutreach.org or call 888-796-1234 for access to affordable medication. Hi, this is Michael McMillan, President and CEO of the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. Glad to be here with Evangelist Nona Thomas on the Christian Business Connection radio show. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program, we were going to be speaking with Dr. Kim Butler Perry. I'm so excited to have this woman on our program. She is going to give great insight to what is going on right here in the city of St. Louis with Affinia Healthcare. So I want to welcome to the CBC Radio Show, Dr. Kim Butler Perry, who is the Associate Dean of Clinical Operations and Vice President and Dental Director of Affinia Healthcare. Good morning, Dr. Perry. Good morning, Nona. Thanks so much for having us. We really do appreciate being here today. You're welcome. And you know, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, but I ask everybody who comes on the show this particular question, and that is, is this the day that the Lord has made for you? Absolutely it is. You know, God has been so good to myself and my family, and uh, just uh, having the Lord in my heart Mm -hmm. allows me to get up and go to work and do all the things uh, that I do. Uh, My husband and I are from uh, Newark, New Jersey, which is an underserved community, very similar to the St. Louis area. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've been married about 32 years now. We've got two boys, and we'd love to go back to Newark, New Jersey, but the Lord had not uh, had that for us. So what Mm -hmm. we do is we look at underserved community as an underserved community, Mm -hmm. no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. So I've always given back Mm -hmm. uh, to community. So when I saw this opportunity, uh, actually I was asked to consider this role Mm -hmm. here in St. Louis and to have the opportunity to be able to be a part of a partnership with A.T. Still University and Affinia Healthcare uh, to be able to improve oral health outcomes. And the St. Louis community and the state of Missouri, it just touches my heart. Yes. Well, you know, it's so obvious that um, you have a passion for what you do. And, you know, I always say that passion, my goodness, that will take you so far because you have to uh, know, as you said, as an underserved you know, area that, that we are in, someone, uh, the partnerships, you have to come in and, and be of help. And I know that um, Home State Health Plan uh, has been a great blessing to you as well, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just being able to provide uh, the care to the uh, patient population that they serve and be able to treat that population uh, here at the uh, new 1500 and Park uh, facility is, um, we're just real excited about that, as well as our other um, Affinia locations as well. Sure. And I know just to kind of acquaint our audience, uh, Affinia um, Healthcare is also formerly known as Grace Hill Absolutely, we are. Uh, In March of 2015, uh, we officially became uh, known as Affinia Healthcare, and we're real excited about that opportunity. It gives us an opportunity to broaden our perspective and uh, in the community and be able to uh, provide the services that we know that the community needs to Mm -hmm. improve the outcomes uh, that we know that uh, we can do. It's been a, a great relationship. Uh, we still have affiliations with Grace Hill. We yes. stu- still do uh, a re- lot of uh, very important uh, uh, things with them that uh, impact and help the yes. community. And we just see this as a different direction mm-hmm. for us to be able to um, really, really make a difference in the community. So we're real excited about that. Indeed. You know, Dr. Perry, in your professional opinion, why do you think that uh, dental health is so important to the African-American community or St. Louis community as a whole? Well, the Surgeon General told us that uh, oral health and 
the overall health of a patient is very important. Mm -hmm. So we know that, uh, you know, for years uh, we have separated the head uh, mm -hmm. from from the rest of the body. <laughs> and uh, the Surgeon's General told us that uh, uh, when we do that, that doesn't improve outcomes. So now we try to focus on not just uh, the oral health of a patient, mm -hmm. but we look at their oral systemic health. Mm. So we look at patients who have diabetes because mm -hmm. we know that diabetes impacts their oral health. Yes. It can cause gum disease. You know, years ago we called it pyrrhea the gum. You know that's right. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we also look at uh, low birth weight um, babies, moms who are uh, pregnant, mm -hmm. and ensuring that they, during their pregnancy and there soon after, that we provide them the education and we also provide them the oral health care that they need so they can have healthy babies. Uh, we know that patients with cardiovascular disease, research has told us that uh, patients with these comorbidities or these other diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and mm -hmm. things of that nature do impact their oral, yes. or, oral health. When we look particularly at diabetes, we know that, you know, we look at the A1C levels and we know that patients who have uh, gum disease uh, that's out of control, uh, that those levels uh, impact their sugar levels. Yes. So, so you know, years ago our parents talk about the sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that uh, gum disease uh, impacts that. So what we try to do is educate our patient population. Not only that, we look at behaviors. How can we help change behaviors in uh, the community? Uh, about in 2010, mm -hmm. I... I uh, completed my master's, and my master's is in clinical and translational research, and part of my research is to uh, impact the health disparities that mm -hmm. we see. Mm -hmm. And part of that is helping to change behaviors, yes. uh, providing resources for patient populations in the communities, helping those moms to understand uh, that for little Johnny and little Susie, um, that just because they may have lost some teeth, that doesn't necessarily mean that their child would lo lose teeth. The other thing we got to remember about our population is that, you know, while we may be really focused on, you know, getting their teeth fixed and things like that, mom's just trying to keep a roof over her head Mama, and food in, her, that's right. in, in, in um, the children's mouth. So we have to be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. So when children present to our clinic and, you know, we try not to judge. But we, so if a mom, if we need to help the child, but we see that she doesn't have a place to live or food, we have resources within Affinia to be able to help those families with that. And when they get that immediate or urgent help that they need, then we can come back and take care of the oral health. You know, th that is so wonderful to know that uh, you are truly interested in the whole man. Absolutely. Because, you know, it kind of reminds me of that old adage, you know, if somebody's hungry, you know, yeah, you, you, you feed them that fish, too. Then they're going to be able to hear about whatever else you want to talk to them about. Absolutely. You know what I'm they saying? Do. And that's so important. You know, in the African-American community uh, for so long, you know, perhaps resources have not been there. And I think that many people have gotten used to that. And you don't have to get used to not right. having quality health care. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the beauty of 1500 Park, which is our new uh, facility. Yes. It is a dental school. Uh, it is with the partnership of A.T. Still University mm -hmm. and Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health and Affinia. At that facility, we have currently 42 uh, dental students. We have two Affinia health care providers and a dental hygienist who, along with the 42 dental students, provide oral health care at the new facility. Our 42 dental students are overseen by licensed uh, uh, dentists who have been in practice for uh, many years, they have, they're very experienced, and they oversee uh, procedures from comprehensive exams to x-rays, uh, fillings, extractions. Mm -hmm. We do bridges, partials, mm -hmm. implants, and things of that nature. Uh, we, Because of our mission uh, with Affinia and A.T. Still University, our goal is to serve an underserved population. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is uh, part of our mission, primarily our patient base that we will see at the the. 50, 1500 Park location is a Medicaid population. We will see homeless patients as well as those patients who 
uh, will have the opportunity to uh, participate in the sliding fee scale. Oh, wow. Uh, we will be able to assist them with that, as well as uh, the gateway populations that we see. But not only that, um, the, our dental students uh, will also see patients who, um, of all walks of life, yes. who would like to visit our our uh, 1500 and park who may need implants and bridges mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Um, you, you know, Dr. Perry, and let me say that I, I thank you for addressing that issue because some people may have concerns. Oh, we're going to have a dental student who is uh, performing procedures, but they're overseeing. There are uh, 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 trained dentists there who are overseeing everything they do. Absolutely. Uh, and just to tell you a little bit about me, I was uh, at Baylor College of Dentistry mm-hmm. uh, for about nine years where mm-hmm. I was an associate of Falcon associate uh, professor and faculty member there where I oversaw mm. uh, the care of D3, uh, D1, 2, and 3 students as first, second, and third years. So I know firsthand that yes. the work that uh, the students do is closely monitored and supervised by trained and licensed uh, dentists. Yes. And they will ensure the quality of care that the uh, students provide. That is so good. That is so good to know. You know, there's such a, a, a fear and a stigma sometimes folks have on visiting a dentist, you know, and and how can, what are ways or tips that you can suggest to help, help people overcome that? Well, one thing, um, it's sort of somewhat of a generational <laughs> kind of thing, <laughs> but I always believe that uh, we can start with our youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, one thing that Affinia has is a new actually, uh, fully um, equipped dental van where we go out to, we have a memorandum of understanding with the Missouri um, uh, St. Louis School District here in Missouri, as well as um, we go to some of the um, um, uh, schools, preschools. And what we try to do is work with our youth, getting getting them comfortable uh, seeing the dentist uh, to kind of alleviate some of those fears that mm-hmm. uh, they they have had over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, we had 30 schools that we uh, were given, and uh, this year we have 36. Uh, I go and I meet every year with the nurses, and what I always tell them is that If you send us uh, the children, we'll definitely take care of them. I believe that it's not enough to just see little Susie, but what we try to do is do a comprehensive exam and uh, complete treatment plans. We we generate a treatment plan. The treatment plan goes home to the mom. Uh, He or she approves of that care, and we bring those children in, and we complete their treatment plan. So we're on that van. We're doing extractions (laughs) if they need them. We're doing fillings and sealants and things of that nature because we know Mm -hmm. That when we complete treatment plans on these children, we improve outcomes, not for just for this child, but for the family and eventually our community. So I believe that if we can start educating our younger folks a little bit early yes. about oral health and how yes. important it is, um, and then uh, I think we'll slowly see that change away from those fears. And then just for the adults, we just, you know, we work with them as best we can. Yes. You know, you talk with them, you hold their hands, and, <laughs> and, and you just provide them a comfortable environment. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's so funny that you said that because literally sometimes you do have to hold their hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. and we do that. Yes. Well, I want to let my listeners know if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking with Dr. Kim Butler Perry, the Associate Dean of Clinical Operations and Vice President and Dental Director of Services for Affinia Healthcare. Dr. Perry, I know that uh, you touched on a little bit about how um, the health, the overall health is what you are concerned with and how actually the dental part of it can help you identify other things that may be going wrong in the body. And so when you do that, especially for children who come in, is there is there a plan? Is there a strategy for that when the children come in and, and maybe something else is identified? Absolutely. So uh, what we have, um, things, we, we know that there are some key issues uh, for children. One, of course, we're always looking Uh, for children who may not have received the care that they needed. So if they have some rampant decay and things like that, um, of course, we always just get them off to the specialists or be able to treat them. But we may have some children whose immunizations may not be up to date. Mm -hmm. Uh, We Mm -hmm. may have some children who've not seen and had an exam with their physician um, uh, within a timely fashion. And within our Affinia um, Healthcare 
uh, uh, center, we can always uh, refer those patients over to our physicians. And then what we're tr what we're doing also, it's um, we have our physicians if if they notice that a child hasn't had an exam, mm -hmm. uh, or if they notice that a child has has some oral health problems or concerns that uh, may not be being addressed. Yes. What we try to do is talk to the parent about them and get those children scheduled over into one of our dental clinics as soon as we possibly can. Yes, and I'm sure that once you come in and do the initial exam and whatever is needed, you want follow-up too. You want to continue to be in contact with those people. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why it's important um, we uh, do comprehensive exams mm -hmm. on these children, mm -hmm. um, particularly for the older children. We generate a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. We talk to the parents about what we've seen. We have them, we consent to do the work, and we go ahead and, and work with the parent as best we can. We also have evening hours because we know folks work. Right. They yes. work every day. Yes, yes. Um, you know, we know we have parents who, you know, we always talk about two good paying jobs, one, and, and don't have any real insurance or benefits, so they really can't take off from work to come take care of little Susie. So, so our evening hours help uh, those families with that, and we I'm try to you, work with them. I'm glad you mentioned that, Dr. Perry. Can you give the uh, phone number and location information so that uh, I know our listeners are listening right now, and they definitely want to take advantage of these services, uh, and I'm sure you have a website as well. Yes. Our uh, Patients who are interested in um, coming to our facility can go to our website. It's Affinia healthcare.org. Uh, our address is 1500 Park Avenue. We're located at the corner of Park and Truman in uh, the Lafayette Square. And our phone number to be able to uh, get an appointment within our uh, dental clinics is 314-833-2700. Again, that's 314-833-2700. Wonderful. Dr. Perry, I, I know that uh, the Lord planted you and your family here in St. Louis. And uh, uh, just from your heart, as you have been, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say in closing about um, the wonderful uh, company that you're working for and how you even want to expand more to get into our communities? Absolutely. Um so, as I said, I currently uh, hold a dual position with A.T. Steele University and Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health, as well as Affinia Healthcare. And um, a couple of things that we're trying to do, uh, coming from uh, Newark, New Jersey, um, you know, such an underserved population, and just knowing that there are opportunities for our youth, you know, and I've always said, and I've said it here since, uh, since I've been here in St. Louis, is that... The community needs to know that this new facility belongs to them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the community needs to know that we can come there and get our work done. Mm. Not only that, um, grandmas mm -hmm. need to know <laughs> that their granddaughters and their grandsons can have the opportunity to stand on the other side of that chair and be able to provide the care to the patient population. So what we're looking at is um, partnering and we have mm -hmm. with organizations within the St. Louis and surrounding communities that work with minority youth or underserved youth who have a desire and a passion for math, the sciences, or want to improve outcomes in their communities. So they, too, can have an opportunity to uh, finish college. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, someone said to me the, the other day, Get them through high school. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. partner with some of these mentoring programs who are trying to get the youth through high school, work with them through college, uh, and then help them uh, get through our pipeline so then they could become students of A.T. Still University mm -hmm. and have the opportunity to be a dental student in our new uh, facility at 1500 Park. That's my, that's what the Lord has put on my heart. To God be the glory for that. I tell you, Affinia Healthcare is doing some great things that we here are. in the metropolitan area. And I want to give my listeners the contact information one more time. Please go to the website of AffiniaHealthcare.org. That's A-F-F-I-N-I-A healthcare.org. Also, they're located at 1500 Park Avenue. That's right there in Lafayette Square. Please give them a call at 314-833-2700. Again, that's 314-833-2700. Dr. Perry, it's been a pleasure 
Hey, you being on the great. CBC radio show today. I appreciate the opportunity. Indeed. We'll have to have you come back and, and uh, talk about some other things that Affinia is doing. Would that please, be okay? Please do. I'd love that. All righty. Thank you again, Dr. Kim Butler-Perry, for being a part of the CBC radio show this morning. You're more than welcome, and thanks for the invite. All right, friends, we're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Hi, this is Michael McMillan, President and CEO of the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. Glad to be here with Evangelist Nona Thomas on the Christian Business Connection radio show. Hello, church. This is Andre House from Thailand's Best Healing and Weight Loss Ministry. And my heart goes out to God's children who are dealing with these health issues, taking these pills 15, 20, 30 years, only to find themselves with the same problems today that they had 15 or 20 years ago. There's something not right with that picture. When God's word tells us, beloved, I I wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. Well, if God wants us healed, if God wants us to be made whole, one of two things is happening. Either God is a healer and he is not doing his job, or we're putting something in our body that is just not right. Well, I'm a firm believer that God is doing his job. So that means there's something that we're putting in our bodies that's just not right, that's prolonging our healing. David says in the book of Psalms 51 verse 7, Lord, purge me with hyssop that I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be white in the snow. David understood the importance of purging the body. Well, if David understood the importance of purging the body, then we must understand the same thing. What God tells us, I give you medicines from the earth, and he that is wise will not turn away from these. Saints, we have got to turn back to God's medicines of the earth so that our healing will manifest. Bring me your arthritis, gout, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, acid reflux, hair loss, cancer, obesity. It don't matter. Just bring it. Valencia Clay of St. Louis, Missouri was taken taking 26 pills a day. 90 days later, she's not taking none. Samantha Howard of West Helena, Arkansas lost 204 pounds and you can too. Mr. Jerry Garrett, who owns the upholstery shop on Brentwood Boulevard, defeated diabetes in less than 90 days. In the last five years, God has used this little healing ministry to deliver over 28,000 of his children off all those drugs and medicines that just don't work. For more information, call us up at 314-306-9017. 314-306-9017. Once again, church, 314-306-9017. Or visit us on the way up at youhousehealingherbs.com. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Hi. Good morning. This is Antha Rogers of edzart.com. I'm a proud member of the Christian Business Connection. Contact me for all of your Christian graphic and kingdom needs. Call me at 314-338-5154. And again, this is Antha Rogers of edzart.com. I'm a proud member of the CBC Christian Business Connection. Are you a member yet? Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program, we were going to be talking with a dear friend of mine. I tell you, this woman's new book is Trailblazing Across the Country. We're so excited that she had an opportunity to come into our studios to talk about what God has done. So I want to welcome to the CBC Radio Show, Minister Deborah Mothershed Black, the author of Where? art thou good morning good morning now you know i tell you woman of god i didn't prep you on this question now okay got a question for you and that Uh, is is this the day that the lord has made for you yes ma'am this is the day that the lord has made for me are you rejoicing (laughs) I am rejoicing. And you're glad in it? I am glad. (laughs) Amen. 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 Well, I tell you, uh, everybody's going to be glad when they get their hands on this. And as I like how you said it, you said that it was written by the Holy Spirit and you. Yes. yes, So so you're not you, you didn't you didn't do this in your own anything oh no i could not have done it in my own I, in fact it went a, another total direction <laughs> from which i thought that it was gonna be it was god it, it was, was god, god. Yes. yeah yeah you know before i get into the book i, I want to ask you this because there's so many people who are listening to this broadcast right now and you know people have said to them you know uh, you've got a book inside of you or you know about your life and this that and the other is that how it went for you minister black did you did you from a child believe that you were going to be writing a book or did it how did this thing happen 
absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I did not know I had a book into, in me until about December, and the Lord just really pressed hard on my heart that he wanted me to write. I always knew that I loved writing, but... I, I didn't really, it, it was no direction with it. Mm -hmm. So the Lord s focused me and uh, said, okay, it's time for you to write a book. So uh, the ending of this book was just, I'm just blown away by just <laughs> as much as anyone else. I read it myself and I can tell that it was the Holy Spirit that do it that did write it because I'm I'm just blown away with it myself. Yes, yes. Um and the title, Where Art Thou? I wish my listeners could see the cover of this book and I, I and actually you can. You can go right now to the website which is Deborah M B books.com and the the cover of the book minister black is so intriguing because the things the, the the signs that you have put on the cover of this book are so many things that people deal with in everyday life am i right yes uh the book uh has a street a straight and narrow street which uh the word of god and then it has on the side the signs and the things that take us off the path, hmm. our journey with God. Things like uh, being stuck, stuck from past hurts, pains, traumas, unforgiveness, fear, brokenness, discontent, and uh, the things that the devil, the lies that we bought from the devil that take us off mm -hmm. the God ordained highway. Yeah, yeah, the God ordained highway. Uh, what what I what I love, I believe that any of these signs <laughs> that you have on the cover, somebody is at some time yes. in their life has yes. suffered from it. I mean, just being stuck, just being in the rut, just not knowing what your divine destiny is. Right. Yes, that that is stuck. God created us all with the gift, with the destiny, with the purpose. And when we're not fulfilling that, we are actually stuck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I believe the order, just in the order of the chapters, tell us about just just right off the top. How did God give you the order for the chapters as we go in the first chapter of the book? Well, God is a purpose for God and he is a God of order. Mm -hmm. So it started out in the beginning, mm -hmm. just basic foundational stuff, because how many of you know, if you don't get your foundation, nothing else will stand. Nothing else will last mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> uh, it, it just won't last. So we started out in the beginning talking about our creator and our purpose and his purpose for us and that he has a plan for all of us. Mm -hmm. And then I went to first things first. And the first thing first is you must be born again. You we mm -hmm. talk about now all the different blessings that the Lord has for us, but first things first and that is you must be born again. You must. You be must born. be born again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I went on to be ye content because people are basing their content on people, places or things and not on the word of God. So uh and I went from that point to the fear factor and deal with some of the things that uh, keep us from going to the next level in life. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, chapter six is help. I'm stuck. <laughs> and uh, there again, it deals with the trauma and the things that uh, we we get stuck on and meaning stuck uh the trials and tribulation that yes. we have that we don't move forward with mm -hmm. that we don't deal with mm -hmm. but we do go on in life and to we're um a point we're showing where we hadn't dealt with it is when we get into another situation, our past is still screaming and speaking and mm -hmm. we just can't. It's holding us hostage mm -hmm. uh, from our destiny, from our future. You know, when you said that, uh, uh, the, the sixth chapter, Help, I'm Stuck, uh, as you were speaking, I saw like uh, you, you're trying to walk, but you got this big old wad of gum underneath yes. your shoe, you know, yes, and it keeps, yes. you know, it's a hindrance. It's, it's helping 
stopping you from going forward comfortably. Am I right about it? Yes. It's like an 18 wheeler pulling a load and you walk, you're walking and you have all this baggage a mile behind you because you have, it's unresolved issues. Yeah. And we must resolve our issues in order to move forward. Uh, in a blessed way. And, you know, uh, Minister Black, what the enemy tries to do to make us think uh, to procrastinate, because, you know, that, oh, you know, it's just too much, it's too heavy, it's too big. And then it just gets worse and worse and the issue gets worse and worse. And so Chapter 6 helps us to get out of that spot so that you can go on, right? Right, because the word of the Lord says he places no more on us than we can bear. So every obstacle, anything that you get into it, it's a God ordained obstacle. Mm-hmm. You can come out. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the chapter seven. I love the title of that because that's true talk right there. What is that? The disease of unforgiveness. Hmm. It is a disease. It, it is, is a, a disease. foul, filthy disease yes. that will eat you up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And so, can you just give us a little tiny taste of that? How do you How do you fight against that disease? How do How can that disease be cut out? You get an inoculation of love from Jesus. Mm. You have to know that the disease affects you more than it does the other person. So true. You have to take ownership that I'm infected. Mm -hmm. You have to want to not be infected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to want to clear yourself and be healed and Then we move on to the next chapter, Be Ye Whole. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's the good news right there, isn't it? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Yes, yes. So, uh, and Be Ye Whole is just talking about, do you really understand what it means to be whole? And according to the Word of God, what it is to be whole. Mm -hmm. And my next subject is, what time is it? And this is talking about the different seasons, what we have in our life, because uh, the Lord has a specific place, time, and season for everything. For everything, there is a season yes, yes. and a reason. And if you notice in the Bible, the Lord told Abraham, Abram at that particular time to, I want you to move over here. I want you to pack up from where you are and go somewhere else where God being God, he could have blessed Abram right where he was. But God said, your blessing is not here. Your blessing is over there. So this is uh, in what time it is. It talks about the different places and the times and the seasons in our life and how we need to recognize it and uh, walk therein. You know, that's so important, Minister Black, because, uh, you know, oftentimes folks will think, well, it, it, it happened in this season last year, so surely it's going to happen again. This uh, and, and that's really putting God in the box. That's, you can't you can't declare what God is going to do. Am I right? You are so right, woman of God. And they're also base it on what they see someone else does it happened for them this way right. but we are all different yes. and we're all on different journeys and different pathway and different roads in our life therefore how the lord worked and moved in you would not necessarily be the way the lord worked and move in me that's right because we all have something to learn something to pick up on our road to destiny. And isn't it a blessing that he is the way he is? Because each one of us have our own custom design blessing yes. package. That's what I call it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, and so chapter 10 uh, simply says, when God asks questions. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, ma'am. When God asks questions. Of course, our God is so nipping and he knows everything. Mm-hmm. But when he asks questions, it's like a pam. <laughs> What what are you thinking? <laughs> Stop. Check your surrounding. It's it's very it's a caution thing for us. Mm-hmm. 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 Because he, uh, he it's a warning for us to check our surrounding. It's a warning for us. Do you know that the decision that you're making, how it's gonna affect 
your life, how it's going to affect your future. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, God just wants us to fulfill our destiny. He says he knows the plans that he has for us. So mm -hmm. God knows the plan. So we need to know the plan mm -hmm. so that we can walk and uh, live in it. Amen. You know what I what I like when you're when you're saying that when God asks questions, it's a warning. And so that really sets us up, because when you take uh, an inventory to 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 hear uh, what God is saying, then if there's anything out of order, you want to get some order in the house, which takes us to the next chapter, chapter 11. Oh, my God. Order in the house. That was totally, totally God. <laughs> and uh, it really addresses the church, the church, the people. And uh, how God is not pleased with the church today. Mm -hmm. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. And uh, in some of the churches, uh, we are so title conscious. Yes. But God wants us to be God conscious. Yes, yes. And uh, we're doing things that are not inspirational to God, that are not uh, pleasing to God mm -hmm. and he just wants his church he is calling his church to order yes and yes. Uh, God again God gives each one of us gifts gifts and our gifts are to serve others mm -hmm. and not to serve ourselves mm -hmm. we have some of the ministers with gifts that are using it as a means of uh for monetary gain. Mm -hmm. And God is not pleased with that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the scriptures that you reference in uh, the 11th chapter of Order of the House is 1 Corinthians 14, 33, where you said, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. All right. So yes. if there's disorder going on in the house, uh, the house of God, your personal house within you. Right. We yes. got to get it together, but you can't do it in your own strength. It's through him, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. It is through him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in today. We have so many trying to compete with one another mm -hmm. when God is wanting us to complete one another. Mm. We're all in this supposedly with the mission of God from God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be a servant. To fulfill his purpose and not ours. Yes. Now, I know that um, you, of course, will be doing uh, uh, book signings. and There's all kind of things that we're going to be announcing coming up on the show. But I know that there are folks listening right now who want to get a copy of this book, which is why we went in such detail just to give them just really we're scratching the surface for real because there's so much more. But how can people get a copy and get more information about your ministry and about this book? You can go to www.debrambbooks.com. That's www.debrambbooks.com. And place an order. I have the books in English, in Spanish, and on CD. Ooh, on CD, too, so I can drive and listen to you. Yes, ma'am. You can drive <laughs> and listen to me. I also know that you're available to go into uh, churches, conferences to talk about the book, aren't you? So they can reach you at what number if they would like you to come into the church or to the organization? They can reach me at the number 318-272-3858. Give it to us one more time. That number is 318-272-3858. Now, Minister Black, can, can can I get you to come back and, and uh, do a series on the book and we just kind of expound from it and just go a little deeper? You, is that going to be all right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That would be just be great. Wonderful. Uh, we're just about out of time. Is there anything else that you would like to say this morning about the book, Where Art Thou? And anything else that's on your heart? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to say that this book will touch you in one place or another. Uh, God is a basic foundational book to help move you through the journey, our journey in life. Mm -hmm. After each chapter, I have some questions because uh, it's questions behind each chapter because a lot of people are in denial saying, well, no, that's not me. That's my sister. That's my brother. So I have some questions so you can 
kind of locate yourself Mm -hmm. and after each chapter also it's a prayer so after you locate yourself you can get delivered through the prayer amen amen (laughs) deliverance through prayer glory to god well i want to thank you again Uh, It's just been a pleasure to have you on the show, Minister Deborah Mothershed Black. Thank you so much for being a part of the CBC radio show this morning. Thank you, Evangelist Nona. It's always a pleasure being with you. All right, friends, we're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Angelia Bills, Vice President of Communications for the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis, and I'm glad to be here with Evangelist Nona Thomas on the Christian Business Connection radio show. Hi, good morning. This is Antha Rogers of EDZArt.com. I'm a proud member of the Christian Business Connection. Contact me for all of your Christian graphic and kingdom needs. Call me at 314-338-5154. And again, this is Antha Rogers of EDZArt.com. I'm a proud member of the CBC Christian Business Connection. Are you a member yet? Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program that we were going to be speaking this morning with Dr. Connie Williams of the Cohen Institute. So I want to welcome to the CBC Radio Show, Dr. Williams. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. You know, Dr. Williams, I didn't prep you on this question, but I ask everybody this question who comes on the program. And that is, is this the day that the Lord has made for you? Most certainly it is. <laughs> Are you rejoicing? Are you excited about it? Yes, ma'am. Good, good, good. I tell you, I, I want to get right to the nuts the nuts and bolts of the Cohen Institute because uh, one thing I love that uh, you say in your, uh, in your marketing pieces is that it is a seminary with an edge. Tell us about That's that. That's right. <laughs> seminary with an edge. You know, anytime you're on edge, that means that you could possibly fall off <laughs> if you go too far. So basically, Cohen Institute is continuously developing a curriculum that progresses. Uh, we don't stand still, but we move on and we dig deep. And that's, that's really the core of Cohen Institute. Wow, I love that. I love that. And I'm sure, tell us how it was founded. Tell us about the, you know, the beginnings of Cohen Institute. Well, I was a a student myself of International College of Bible Theology, which is uh, based out of North City, Illinois, and um, that's our home office. And I was a student myself, and after I received my master's, uh, I felt like it was time to move on, and I finished my doctorate um, correspondently, and uh, I actually kind of fell into starting my own satellite of ICBT. Uh, After a while, after we grew, uh, I decided that our direction in order not to harm basically the home office, our direction was going a little bit different than the home office, although we are still affiliated uh, on every uh, plane. Uh, but we wanted to do something that was a little bit different than they were doing. We wanted to move further than they were doing. So we got our own accreditation, and God very specifically and miraculously gave me the name, which at the time I did not know what it really would mean in the future, and that's Cohen Institute. Well, one of the things that I like that uh, you say about Cohen Institute, Dr. Williams, is that you encourage your students to be open-minded and to think for themselves. And I have to say, I myself I'm a uh, uh, seminary graduate. I have my degree. And I'm telling you, we, they didn't give us a lot of options to be open-minded and to think for ourselves. So this really is something different that Cohen Institute encourages. Right. Uh, to be open-minded is a prerequisite to go to the deeper levels of God. You cannot proceed in the deep things of God if you have put him in a box. And uh, if, if he's in a box, then you can't move around except for that box. That's the only place that you can move around in. And the boxes are usually created by particular denominations. Yes, yes. I know that uh, uh, you're currently right now uh, in an open enrollment coming up for for the winter classes. Am I right? That's correct. Yes. Tell us about that open enrollment period. The 
open enrollment, we, we open basically all year round. Students can register at any time. Uh, we go by trimesters. We have three a year. They are 13 weeks in length, and there's an optional summer school, which our students absolutely love because they don't have to write a paper and <laughs> get, <laughs> get an easy credit, basically. But we usually choose something out of the, out of the box course that anybody can take. And uh, so in December, we are forming our new trimester for the winter, and uh, it starts December the 3rd for the Thursday campus, and then the Monday campus will be the following Monday, whatever date that is. I don't even know right now. Yes. Tell us about your instructors at the Cohen Institute. Uh, our instructors are the best instructors in St. Louis. <laughs> they have been <laughs> sent to us uh, uh, in various ways. Um, um, of course, we are housed by two uh, churches. Uh, that's how we keep our tuition down. Uh, we are housed by Trinity Mount Carmel, where uh, Pastor Roach is the pastor, and he has also instructed up to this last trimester. Uh, he's been one of our professors. He received his doctor through us as well. Um, then we have Pastor Robert Griffin uh, of Christian Embassy. That's our second host. That's our elite campus. Uh, he hosts us there, who has also, he started with us actually from scratch. Wow. And uh, has received his doctorate, I believe it was last year. And he's worked his way through, uh, you know, the whole program while pastoring, being a student and a student teacher. So uh, he is one of our uh, instructors. Uh, then we have uh, Dr. Timothy Sims. Uh, he just retired, actually. So we, we've got uh, uh, instructors coming from all various types. Um, some of them are alumni, and some of them are established uh, uh, pastors already from the area. But we do require all of them to be degreed. We have uh, Pastor Michael Falk. Uh, he is one of our instructors, Dr. Leandra uh, Henderson. Uh, who is an alumni. She graduated with us and Dr. Um, Aubrey Kishner from uh, Jubilee uh, Worship Center. Well, I tell you, Dr. Williams, I'm familiar with several of the pastors or instructors who you have. And yes, they are qualified men rooted and grounded in the word of God. So I believe you got the right people with you. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, there may be someone who li who's listening right now. Perhaps they, they have their degree in theology already, but they might want to come back and get a refresher uh, course. or is, Are things like that possible? We have postgraduate degrees. Um, you know, we have quite a few transfers from other uh, Bible colleges, and our experience has been that when they transfer, they're very surprised at the information that we have available for them. Uh, we also specialize in, uh, you know, our lead program and our postgraduate program where PhD is available. Most people think that a doctorate is a PhD, but it isn't. There's mm -hmm. a 30-hour difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they can always come for a second doctorate or uh, work on their PhD. I want to let my listeners know that if you're just tuning in this morning, we are talking with Dr. Connie Williams, the dean of the Cohen Institute. Dr. Williams, can you just give us maybe a taste of some of the course topics, some of the, just a little bit of what uh, you may offer, perhaps on a uh, basic foundational level? On the basic foundational level, we, we basically do the same thing that most seminaries do, you know, Old and New Testament, prayer and, uh, you know, faith, those kind of things are undergrad uh, programs. Uh, once you step past that, then you, uh, when, once you start with your major, uh, your master's, you pick your major. And there you specialize then. Uh, it could be Christian counseling, theology, uh, first century Christianity. Uh, we have various degrees, ministry, evangelism, although that's kind of dying down since evangelism is really changing. Uh, so we have very interesting classes as well that's very out of the box. One of our lead courses coming up in December is called Inner Space. And it comes from a, a first century perspective on spirituality. Um, one of the things that we do is we try to work our way back 2,000 years, uh, you know, all the stuff that we have received and have floated down from, the, from Catholicism to us. Uh, we have lost a lot of things. So we are trying to uh, uh, regain that access and knowledge that we have lost. Mm -hmm. The same things that Jesus was taught. We actually teach that. Uh, we have actually Jewish rabbis on our advisory board who help us 
uh, uh, work through that information because that information is only available through Judaism. Uh, and so we look at Jesus' life that he lived, how he was raised, what he was taught, and then look at the scriptures again. Mm-hmm. and understand he was Jewish, is still Jewish, and when he comes back, he's still going to be Jewish. <laughs> so <laughs> if we don't understand his culture yes. and how they thought about Scripture, then it is very difficult, and a lot of times we end up uh, in a very superficial ground as far as the Gospels are concerned and the New Testament as a whole. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's kind of what we focus on. You know, I, I, I want to go back maybe a couple of paragraphs, Dr. Williams, when you said that evangelism is changing. Can you expound on that? Evangelism is changing because we are in the age of technology. People have access to information. And so going out in the street will only reach a certain type of people. And usually what the Christian church goes after is the down and out, which that's good. They need to be taken care of. However, uh, society is changing, and we have other people in the world as well. Everybody is not poor, and everybody is not down and out. You also have the people that's educated. You have the aristocrat. And so who is evangelizing them? Mm. So with the informational age, everybody can go to their phone, to the computer, and pull up information. Everybody in the United States knows who Jesus is. They may not follow him, but they know who he is. They understand that the building on the corner there, that's a church, and that's where people go to church. They understand that concept. So we can no longer go out there and say, hey, I want to introduce you to my Jesus. They already know your Jesus. Now you have to approach them on a different level. You have to bring to them something other than, hey, you're in a bad place, and you need to come out of your bad place. What if people are not in a bad place? How do we minister to them, and how do we introduce them to God? Mm-hmm. And so that's a whole new issue and a whole new concept. Preaching on the street corner, that used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. You, mm-hmm. you cannot get people to come to God, at least not in great numbers, you know, uh, by standing on the, on the corner. Because most people will be annoyed and really don't want to listen to you. So we have to approach evangelism and those that are unchurched from a different plane. You know, and you have to, you have to come with some sort of uh, logic and intelligence. I tell people all the time, you know, God is not just spiritual. He's also smart. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, you know, we, have, we base everything on spirituality when God is actually quite uh, logical and practical as well. And so we have to build our evangelism in a different form, and, and we're actually still developing that area of this new evangelism. Uh, people are still trying to find out, you know, how can we reach these people, uh, if people even try. It's very easy to go to the down and out. They have nowhere to go. But how do you reach the people that are not down and out, and mm-hmm. they don't know Jesus either? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. sometimes the balance of that is very unfair because God wants everybody. He loves everybody, not just the poor and down and out. Yes, yes. You know, we're just about out of time, Dr. Williams, but I wanted to also touch on the life coaching certification. Can you tell us briefly about that? Right. Um, Life coaching is very popular right now. Uh, Life coaching used to be called really Christian counseling. And the issue with Christian counseling is that you can't license the people in Christian counseling. Uh, Whereas life coaching is um, something that is legal and people can actually work to build their own business if they are trained in how to coach uh, people, you know, with their various needs in their lifestyle, whether it's from the financial aspect or the physical aspect or the spiritual aspect. So when we take people through the life coaching program, we train them how to, how to train others in getting their lives back together. And then they can, from there, build, you know, uh, their own business by uh, doing so. I understand. Dr. Williams, please give us all of your contact information. Okay. Uh, Cohen Institute um, has a website, and the website is seminarywithanedge.org. Uh, you can also uh, visit us on our Moodle page, which Moodle is now available at Cohen Institute, and people who cannot attend the classroom can actually take classes online now. And that is Cohen Institute at com, And there's no www in front of that. Uh, we also, our phone number is 314-521-3321. And we are located in North County. The campus information uh, is available on our website. 
And uh, you can give us a call at any time, and we'd be glad to talk to you about your Indeed. enrollment. Give us that phone number one more time, Dr. Williams, would you? Sure. 314-521-3321. Wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing? Well, um, I hope that uh, the listeners, you know, uh, get a different perspective of what seminary is. Is a seminary has a stigma attached to it that says uh, seminary cemetery. Uh, but I want our listeners to know that our seminary is spirit field, and that we are moved and guided by the direction of the Lord, and yet are able to teach academics. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Connie Williams, the Dean at Cohen Institute. It's been a pleasure having you on our program this morning, Dr. Connie. It's been a pleasure to be allowed to be on your program. (laughs) Thank you so much for that opportunity. You're welcome. Friends, haven't we had a fantastic show today? I tell you, every single week, God does the thing. He really does. I want to thank my guest, Dr. Kim Butler-Perry of Athenia Healthcare. Thank you so much, Minister Deborah Mothershed Black, the author of Where Art Thou? And of course, Dr. Connie Williams, the Dean of the Cohen Institute. Go to my website, friends, of the thecbcradioshow.com, and you'll get more information on everybody who was on the show. Thank you for listening. As always, to God be the glory. Christian Business Connection. Connecting your business or ministry to the world.